All right, so it's just been announced that Chris Paul is most likely to be waived by the Phoenix Suns. Now, there's also some reports out there saying they're going to explore trade options first, but if not, he'll end up being waived. And honestly, I do see him being waived. So today we're going to talk about what teams he could possibly go to when he's waived by the Phoenix Suns. Now, the type of team that I see him playing for is likely a contender. I think at this point, that's where he needs to be playing for a contender. I think that contender has to have a good starting point guard that can also be in situations at the end of games where them and Chris Paul can be on the floor at the same time to best utilize their entire roster. Mainly because at this age, Chris Paul just realistically isn't going to hold up for an entire 82 game season. Over pretty much the last half of his career, he's been pretty injury prone. So you want to kind of pick and choose where he plays in the regular season, low manage him as much as you can. And then once playoff time comes, try to ramp him up as much as you can. Again, still not overdoing his workload. Now, the first place that I could see him going to now that he's waived is the Milwaukee Bucks. They already have a starting caliber point guard all-star level point guard and Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday can also play off the ball at the two guard. I think he's strong enough. He's played there, so he's not in unfamiliar territory. Um, he played there a lot when he was with the Pelicans, so he's not, you know, going to be, it's not going to be a foreign thing to him. It's not going to be like, oh, Drew Holiday has to learn how to play off the ball. He's already used to it. This also gives them another ball handler who can be on the court when Drew Holiday isn't there. You can play uh, one of your other guys, you can play Pat Connison at the two, you can play Grayson Allen at the two. It gives you a lot of versatility, and I think with this new coach, it'll open up a lot of options for different lineups that other teams aren't used to seeing from this Bucks team. Also, I think in late game situations, I think the Bucks could really use Chris Paul as that option to get them in and out of sets, like a Giannis and Chris Paul pick and roll down the down the stretch of a game sounds like a very, very potent offense to go to. I like the Drew Holiday and Giannis pick and roll. I like the Chris Middleton and Giannis pick and roll. But as great as those two are in the pick and roll situation specifically, neither one of those guys are doing it better than Chris Paul. And I think that that's just something that we've seen over time. Time and time again, he's shown you, regardless of his age or wherever he's at in his career, the pick and roll is going to be his bread and butter. And if you're playing with a arguably top 25 player of all time on that pick and roll who's seven feet and moves like a guard, I think it's going to get really ugly for teams. And then you'll have Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton on the wings and most guys aren't trying to leave them. Not that they're knockdown shooters, but just like they they can create for themselves when they catch it if you leave them. All right, so next team that I think you should go to, which this is a little bit of a interesting fit, but let's get into it. I think you should go to Memphis. Now, Memphis obviously is going to be dealing with the John Morant stuff early on in the season. So I think he'll kind of like, you know, hold them down until... Ja gets back from however long his suspension is. We don't know how much it is going to be yet, but whenever he does get back, I think he can kind of work himself into the rotation if Chris Paul is already there. Tyus Jones gets to stay into his six-man position, or if you want to bring Tyus Jones into the starting position and bring Chris Paul off the bench, that works too. Or honestly, if you want to try and play them both at the same time when Ja gets back, I think that that would be a thing that they can get away with because they do have the capable frontline defenders and Steven, um, Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr. and Brandon Clark when he gets back. So I think they have options if they were to go that route. And the main reason just honestly is Chris Paul will be a culture setter, changer, whatever you want to call it. He's been that everywhere he's been. He's a veteran player who's been around the league and seen just about everything there is to see. And that locker room desperately needs it, at least from the outside looking in. They need somebody to come in there and really show guys how to be professionals. And I think what other guy to learn from better than somebody who's, you know, uh, what do you call it, league-wide known as the point guy. You know, so I think that would be good for them, getting a real culture setter in there who's not going to take too many shots, who's not going to disrupt the flow too much. All right, the next one will be a little quick, and I think it's what a lot of fans want, is him going to the L.A. Lakers. Now, uh, this one doesn't have too many logical explanations behind it. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it would look cool, but I, I realistically don't see it being an option. Um, but yeah, him going to the Lakers, I think the, the Lakers wouldn't have to worry about re-signing D'Angelo Russell 
at least not at such a big price. I mean, and if they get Chris Paul, they can honestly say, hey, you can walk. But that interrupts my idea of him going to a team with a serviceable starting point guard. Because at that point, you put Chris Paul into a position where he has to play big minutes. And you already have an injury-prone Anthony Davis and an aging LeBron James who's bound to miss, what, anywhere from 10 to 20 games a season at minimum. Like, that's just a given, even if that's just rest-related stuff. So I, I don't see it, um, but it's L.A., so so why not? They're used to the big stars, um, and they try to grab the big names and stuff like that. LeBron and Chris Paul have a relationship, a very good relationship. As everybody knows, maybe that convinces him to come. But again, I don't think it's a great fit for this team, but who knows? I mean, they'll get him for cheap. I think that's the one thing about all of these moves is they'll get Chris Paul for cheap because he's just gotten waived. I'm assuming whatever team he signs with next is going to be on a veteran minimum, maybe like $5 million or something, I think, like that. So whoever gets them, it'll be a bargain deal. In the event that they didn't sign D'Angelo Russell back, though, and just went with Chris Paul, I, I, there is one way I see them getting away with it. One thing they could do is add more depth to their other positions that they have on the court, and it could allow LeBron to sometimes take over those point guard duties, maybe not a starting point. But somehow stagger his and Chris Paul's minutes where you always have that floor general on the court earlier on in games. And then if you have the wings and the bigs to kind of, uh, what do you call it, fill in the gaps and stuff like that, I could see them possibly managing getting away with it. Austin Reeves is a pretty good ball handler. I expect them to bring him back. So in that world, if they just don't pay D'Angelo Russell and let him walk and let Malik Beasley and Mo Bamba walk, they have, and if they have the money where they can just go say, hey, we're going to get really good depth behind these other positions outside of the point, and we'll kind of run point guard by committee with LeBron, CP, and Austin Reeves. Now, can they get away with that for 82-game season? I'm not sure, but again, that's the only way I really see it working out. And they have to get a center for AD. I think at some point they like they have to go get a serviceable center for him so he doesn't have to keep playing it and he can get back to the power forward like he likes. Because in the bubble, a lot of people tend to forget like that's what worked for the Lakers is AD being able to play power forward and center depending on matchups. But we're not going to dive too deep into the Lakers. I'm not a fan, so move on to the next one. All right, the next one, uh, again, not one that I particularly like too much, but I think it's going to be a realistic option, and that's the Clippers. Now, do they have the money to do this? I don't know, but it seems like they always get these guys, and it seems like they never work out. That is literally the one thing that's keeping me away from this. Every single player that they get like this, it just never pans out for them. The Russ thing worked, but that's without Paul George and CP, so like that's how Russell Westbrook looks his best when it's him and him only. Uh, so... <laughs> He looked decent in the games that he played in a regular season, but he's a Hall of Famer. We, we're looking at him in the playoffs. So he played well, but outside of him, I, I don't remember any other guy that like the Clippers brought in after like a buyout or them being waived or something that actually came in and panned out that great. And like Chris Paul doesn't have good history with the Clippers, like a lot of bad, you know, uh, situations that he was in with them didn't end on the greatest of terms. It just doesn't seem like doesn't seem like uh, it seems like a good fit on paper Chris Paul Kawhi Leonard uh, Paul George but again like I said with the Lakers you're putting him with old guys with injury problems Kawhi probably won't be there to start the season uh, Paul George will probably miss some games which he has been prone to do over these last couple years it's just like you're just throwing old guys together again who are injury prone I mean if it happens I'm sure they'll be like you know big title odds favorites or whatever you want to call it not number one but I'm pretty sure they'll be up there just off of names alone, but the likelihood of it holding up through an 82 game season and playing out in the playoffs just isn't realistic to me, but that's it. That's my thoughts for this video. You guys get in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you made it this far, feel free to leave a like or subscribe till next time.